Adrian Perez Salazar is a political analyst and attorney. He joins us live now from Guayaquil. Welcome to the program. So, why have gang leaders and crime cartels seemingly become so powerful in Ecuador over a relatively short period of time? What has been the root cause of this? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, the causes are multiple, but uh, what is particularly uh, important to emphasize here is we're a dollarized economy. So naturally, uh, it's much more easier for uh, international crime to, uh, for, to launder money in a place like Ecuador. And uh, uh, this is not something that uh, has uh, started recently. This is something that has been building up for many, many years. Uh, past policies were very lax in terms of uh, immigration, very lax in terms of uh, uh, allowing uh, gang leaders to, to establish uh, dominance in areas such as, uh, as the prisons. And it's only in the last couple of years that uh, we are seeing all the results of many, many years of, of, of these uh, structural problems being uh, uh, exacerbated. Right. So can the president not only put a lid on this, but also reduce the levels of crime that have so afflicted the nation? It is very, very hard. Uh, Novoa has just uh, issued a state of emergency and uh, has declared uh, internal, uh, an internal armed conflict, which is essentially a declaration of war. He has labeled these criminal organizations as belligerent groups. And uh, while it's not completely clear right now what are all the legal ramifications of his decision, this is something that's completely unprecedented, the stated, uh, the stated purpose of this is that he wants to allow uh, the military to intervene directly in, in the conflict, and not, not only the, the police, and he wants to give them uh, ample room to use lethal force. And it, this is something that is uh, applauded by most of the population. It, 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 there's this uh, general feeling that uh, we have completely lost control of our country and that if we don't do something very drastic right now, then we're just going to become a failed state. Given what you say, I mean, how worrying is this for the wider region as well? For example, uh, Peru on, on the southern border. <laughs> It is very concerning. This is not something that has only happened in Ecuador. Uh, Ecuador is probably the, the one that has been more affected by this, uh, by this increasing in gang-related violence. But the whole of Latin America has seen an upsurge in, uh, in violence in recent, uh, recent months. Part of the reason why it's becoming so, uh, so serious right now is uh, it's probably because of the fentanyl crisis in the United States. You see, uh, Gangs here in Latin America produce cocaine, and that, that, that's their, ma their main export in, uh, into the uh, American market. But uh, recently, as it's very well known, the American market uh, now has a preference for, uh, for fentanyl, which is not produced in, uh, in, in Latin America. And what this causes is that all these criminal organizations are all of a sudden starved for money. And this makes them more violent more aggressive and more willing to find other ways to um, to finance their operations, such as kidnapping or extortion. And uh, this is not something that has only happened in Ecuador. This is the, Ecuador is probably the the most affected of all countries. But this is, some, this is something that you can also see in Colombia, Bolivia, and other Latin American countries. 